ronaldclark.com Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's Wednesday, 25th of November. Alan Ruff, Tam McManus and Charlie Adam here with me. We're delighted that you could join us, like, share and follow us. And of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting that red button as well to join the football family. It's a big day, it's a special day, there's lots to talk about, but it's a very special day indeed, because of course, someone has reached a big milestone. Ah, the fringe years. Here comes the perum. A familiar sight. The birds. The rap years. Back to the bird. Ah, Senga, your first love. Losing it racing. Your dog died face. Happy birthday, Ruffy. Ah, the old boy, 69, eh? 69. Oh, 69. oh next year's a big one. Next one's a big oh. one. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, if you get to if you get to sixty nine in the condition the big man's in, you'll be doing well. Oh, tell me about it! I'll be delighted. It looks it's well, fantastic. Oh, but, uh, no, and by the way, been a, I can't been believe a good day. Lots of, I'd like to thank everybody for all their good wishes and uh, obviously a wee invitation, which was a surprise. That I'll I'll take up and and let you know how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe, Ruffy, <laughs> that uh, I can't believe that. Uh, honestly, we took a photograph. Charlie, you will never believe this. We're on a Saturday show. Um, we're doing the results service a lot. <clears throat> Ruffy's in great form. He's chirpy. He's happy. He's joking as well. He's giving his opinion. And then his wife decides it would be a good idea at quarter to five to phone Ruffy and tell him his dog has died. And that is what that, that picture, <laughs> that, that picture, yeah. that picture yeah. is Ruffy just about to bust out green. So, he wasn't and and as you can, yeah, as as you can imagine, Charlie, the results were beginning to come in uh, after I'd been given that bit of good news. And obviously, Peter didn't know, and he goes, "Ruffy, uh, Aberdeen have just scored at St Mirren. What's your what are you thinking?" My exact words: I couldn't give a flying. <laughs> 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 Honestly, it was, it was incredible. And of course, Rafi, I have to tell you, and there's no surprise that lots of people uh, on our Facebook messaging are just wishing you uh, the very best. Happy birthday, 69. I know it's your favourite number, uh, and you've finally reached it, which means that uh, I owe Tam a tenner. Because when I sign Thomas, says, look, I don't, I don't. there's no way he, there's no way he's going to make it to sixty nine. I thought, I thought it was going to be the Peter and Tam show. I was oh, just, honestly, just I'm, I've never Can't seen a boy so gutted it? last night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, never seen a boy so gutted about the whole thing. Anyway, uh, great to have you on, Rocky. I hope you get lots of presents for your birthday. Obviously, uh, Charlie, Tam, and myself have got you, uh, you know, a substantial gift but due to restrictions, we can't get it over to you. So simple as that. Anyway. Let's deal with the here and now. We'll be talking about the Europa League matches, uh, Rangers against Benfica and, of course, Sparta Prague against uh, Celtic to come. Um, the hot issue, the hot burning issue at the moment in Scottish football is will Charlie Adam get Dundee relegated? No, I'm only kidding. We'll talk about that later <laughs> on as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was talking to his gaffer last night. Oh, I know, yeah, I know. He's, 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 hey, well, listen, is it, is the, guy's, is it the guy's not here. He's poor, he's never hair left, McPeak. He's never, he's never, had, had any. He's never had any recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Listen, we're going to talk about Dundee um, a little later on the show. We'll get Charlie's thoughts on it after that. Uh, well, blowout from uh, Paul McGowan. We'll get Charlie's reaction to that too. But uh, nevertheless, we'll talk about Hibs as well. We'll hear from Stephen Gerrard. Uh, we're going to hear from Neil Lennon because obviously this morning, uh, they must have been up at the crack of dawn. The Green Brigade thought it would be a good idea to go out and hang a banner outside Celtic Park. Um, there they are. Save the 10, time to go. Neil is how the Green Brigade <coughs> view uh, this current point in Celtic's history. Um, and then they released a statement. Um, obviously, um, quite a few people have had a look at this. Um, 
You can make your own mind up on it. Um, basically, they said after a decade of unrivaled footballing and financial dominance, it's disappointing to find ourselves 11 points off the league summit and virtually out of the Europa League, having failed to make it past the second round of the Champions League qualification. We appreciate all that Neil Lennon has done for the club and endured in his time in Scotland. However, there is simply too much at stake to um, persevere in hope rather than expectation, and a managerial change needs to be made. Celtic Football Club is bigger than us all, and the good of the club must come first. Peter Lowell and the Celtic board must act now in a bid to save 10 in a row as well as their own legacies. Should they fail to deliver this title, it will be them who are held to account. Now, like them or loathe them, they've made a comment. What do you make of it, Ruffy? Yeah, well, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Uh, they've obviously got their own views and what Neil's done at the club. Uh, I, I personally don't agree with it. I think uh, if you look at Neil's record at the club, uh, it's been pretty impressive. There's another cup final round the corner. Uh, I, I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's only won, uh, lost one domestic game this year. You know, We all know they're not playing well. He knows they're not playing well. He knows it has to be better. But at this time of the year, you know, it's far too early to, to talking about, you know, managers being sacked. You know, I know this is a big year and I think a lot of supporters are putting this 10 in a row way, way too high for me. You know, life will go on if 10 in a row doesn't happen. But uh, screaming for somebody's head at this precise moment isn't for me. Well, um, you know, lots of people are reacting to it. John Kiernan says the Green Brigade don't speak for me. Um, obviously, there are Celtic fans who will agree, some will disagree on it. Um, here's what Neil Lennon has said about it. I mean, I only became aware of the banner about 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, but um, yeah, um, it's disappointing. So, But, you know, fans are entitled to voice their opinion, whether I agree with it or not. You know, it's irrelevant. You know, they've, they've put it out there. Um, it's something that I'm not going to really engage with. You know, I've got a job to do here. I think I've done it pretty well since I've come back in. I've sort of reconciled myself to the fact that maybe I'm not going to be, you know, everyone's cup of tea. But um, it's a great privilege doing this job. I take it as a privilege. The club means a lot to me and it has done for the last 20 years. And I'm strong, you know, and I feel strong. And my backroom team is strong. And the players are... So going to get better, I think, and more consistent as we go along. Well, there's his reply, Tom. Uh, I, I, thought it's, I think it's nonsense, to be honest, Peter. I, I don't agree with the banner at all. The statement's f all right for me. It's fine. You know, the supporters are entitled to, to, to say that, what they think. I think the banner's crass. I think it really is. I think it's embarrassing. Listen, I, I think it's, it's supporters who, probably in the 18 to 25 age group bracket, who have known nothing but success at Celtic, uh, you know, I think they're spoiled. I think there's a sense of entitlement about, you know, among a certain certain Celtic supporters. I, I would say the younger section of the support. They didn't grow up through the nineties. You know, the Celtic supporters older who grew up through the nineties when Celtic were hopeless. Your Wayne Biggins, you know, Carol Muggleton, Paul Hayes, <laughs> Gary Gillespie. Listen, I could go on and go on. Rangers were dominant. They won everything. I don't think I've seen Celtic winning a league title throughout my whole high school uh, and primary school. So listen. I think there's got to be a, a, a realisation that mm. it swings and roundabouts when it comes to Celtic Rangers. You know, Celtic have had a really dominant period. Neil Lennon's only lost one game. Whether you agree or not with him being the manager, I think this, the, the banner is... You know, the, the, these supporters, you know, proclaim to be the best supporters in the world. The Celtic supporters, that that's that lets a lot of them down, that banner. I, I don't agree with it at all. Yeah. And I think it's a nonsense, yeah. Peter. Well, let's quantify it. I mean, it's a small group of people in a corner who are accommodated and may well feel as if they have um, a bigger voice than they should have. Um, there are a number of Celtic fans, and I always go back to Gordon Strachan, who used to say to me, if two people phone in, you're phone in, um, and say I'm an idiot or I'm rubbish. Does that mean I'm rubbish? You know, um, I think you're right on the point, and this is the, the key area here, Charlie. I think the, the Green Brigade or anybody else can have an opinion on Neil Lennon. I ha I've written a column earlier in the week basically saying that, quite simply, I think the board have made mistakes. I think the recruitment programme um, has been at times questionable, um, and the timing of some of the recruitment has definitely been questionable. But the manager knows the manager doesn't need to be told by a banner outside Celtic Park. The manager knows that if the results don't go his way, he'll face the sack. Um, that's that's the nature of the game. Neil knows the pressures. He's well paid 
to take on that pressure and take the criticism as well. He has to turn it around. And there are a few people, and, and I think the main focus, Charlie, of my column at the start of the week was some of the players are a disgrace. Yeah, listen, it's um, when ro- results don't go for you the, the, in the old firm, Celtic or Rangers, <coughs> pressions heightens. But when you're in a tough period, you look to your supporters. This is a, a small minority of, of idiots that are, are showing frustration. Listen, we all know on the outside Celtic are not playing to the levels. But there'll be a point, and I said it previously in the last couple of weeks, there'll be a point in the season where Celtic will go and win six, seven, eight in a row. And that's what will happen because they've got good players. They've got a good good, um, you know, good management team. Uh, it's, it's just frustrating and it's probably just not what Celtic... Um, represents people like that, you know, going out and standing in front of Celtic Park with banners and things like that. So, no, they're going through a tough time, and, and the only way they've got to do it is rally together and, and and focus on what they can do to improve. Listen, results in Europe have been poor, and they know that, and the league as well. So, no, I, I just think that this is, like I said, it's a small minority. Neil will take this on the chin. He'll understand it. He understands it. He's been in Glasgow 20 years now, the pressure of since day one. So, I don't think it'll make any difference to the board. Peter Lowell's uh, and Dermot Desmond are, are clever businessmen. They're, they're, they'll be relaxed about it. Um, and, and, and Neil Lennon will be the manager for, for Celtic till the end of the season, um, unless something drastic happens. Yeah, um, lots of people are having a comment, lots of people throwing the support behind the manager. Um, and Andrew Robertson says, Peter, sorry, mate, you're just as bad. Aidan McGeady comments yesterday were embarrassing. Um, Andrew, you need to calm your jets, son. This is a club who signed uh, Robbie Keane and Craig Bellamy and still couldn't win the league. Um, you know, sometimes there are certain things that clubs do to try and save their season. Um, they I, I thought, a couple I, of players in. I understand it as well. But like you said, and you know, we'll go to the level as well at, at the level I'm putting it. Sometimes the players have to have a, to get a grip of themselves and say, we're not performing. You know what I mean? Look at yourself in the mirror and say, what are we doing wrong? What's, for instance, Edward, what's he done different from what he did last season? Or, you know, you know, you bring in somebody like a Shane Duffy, not performing to the level. I uh, couldn't wait to try and get away in a the window. There's just, there was t- too much going on and grumblings going on at Celtic earlier in the season. And, you know, they'll just be desperate to get, you know, on back on the pitch and trying to win games. They're in another cup final. Uh, looks like they like say they're favourites for to win that. And it's because, you know, at, at last Rangers in the last two, three years since um, Stephen Gerrard's come in, they've gave him a challenge. They've won six or seven trophies at a canter. You know, Rangers have not been in the league, so it's been easy for them. So all of a sudden when there's a bit of pressure on, Rangers have stepped up to the mark, invested well and and if you if you look at the table, if Celtic win the two games in hand, it's only five points. There's still plenty of football to be played. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, I think you speak a lot of sense. I think you're one hundred percent correct. I think we've all echoed those sentiments. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, and I'll mention it again for people who are highly critical of Neil Lennon and his tactics, it was good enough to steady the ship when Brendan Rodgers jumped ship. It was good enough to win them the title last season, albeit uh, when COVID called the league, but they were 13 points clear. So when he wins games and he wins big games, he's a tactical genius. When he loses them in this season of all seasons, um, then suddenly you get people outside Celtic Park with banners. You can draw your own conclusions um, on this one. Um, As far as, yeah? There's no guarantee that if Celtic bin Neil Lennon tomorrow that they'll win the league anyway. I mean, a new manager oh. comes in. I mean, I, I've seen I've seen some of the names getting branded about. Roy Keane, kidding me on, because because he, he speaks yep. well in Sky Sports. His record as a manager is terrible, you know. And we're looking at Martin O'Neill. Not for me. I think he was a great manager. I think he's past. I think he's past that now. Club level. Uh, Gordon Strachan. Not for me. Who do you bring in? Eddie Howe. Doesn't he know anybody in Scottish football? <laughs> you know, yeah. there's no guarantee. Rangers have been building to this moment for two years. You know, a Celtic manager's got to come in and build and build and get his own philosophies across. There's no guarantee if you sack Neil Lennon that you win the league anyway. No, I think you're 100% correct. As far as winning titles, Neil Lennon says he knows what it's all about. We know we have a, a, a title race on, a challenge, and that's one we should embrace. You know, rather than run away from it, you know, do what we always do, take it on. This is probably new for some of the players and certainly for... You know, a selection of fans, but uh, it's not new for me. 
I've been in many title races and, and challenges before, so I know how to win them. Yeah, he's more calm. I think the main crux of my thoughts on this is quite simply a number of players' attitude is questionable. I think their um, objective, again, questionable. I think they need to step up to the plate, as Charlie mentioned only moments ago as well. Uh, they need to show that they are behind the manager. The Scott Brown, the captain, says they are 100% behind him. I think that's today's day and age. It's all social media. It's all... Uh, a picture for Instagram or Twitter but no we've got 100% faith in the manager he's been fantastic with us and the support that we've had uh, through the nine in a row has been incredible and it's just stick with us make sure we're all together and we, we focus and we, we aim to go forward and we'll get the performances going yeah, well, uh, listen, uh, I mean he, he is the ally that you need there Tom despite the fact that he's on a regular basis at the moment, getting substituted. Yeah, listen, I, I like that from Scott Brown. You know, he's he's supporting the manager, he's supporting the club, he's saying that there's got to be a togetherness within the club, and he's basically asking for support in a, in a time of need. You know, Celtic have not got, obviously got the supporters in at Parkhead at the minute, but, you know, they've got to calm, calm down. You know, there's, there's still plenty of games to go. You know, OK, Rangers are big favourites now, they're playing well. Yeah, but, you know, it's the first real period that in Celtic in the last seven or eight seasons where they've been really under pressure from Rangers. So I think you've got to calm down. It's the first test, you know, get behind the club. That's what a supporter's all about, through thick and thin. You know, you can't just be everything's great when you're winning games and winning trophies. What about when the, in the tough times when you're struggling a wee bit and you've, you need the support of the, of the fans? You know, that's what Celtic need right now. They need more, more support from the fans. And as Bruni said, a lot of it is social media. A lot of it is Instagram and Twitter and people, people can get away with saying what they want. You know, so I've got to ignore that and get behind the club and get behind the team and the manager for me. Yeah, um, apologies to anyone on Facebook. I think we've got a technical issue there. I don't know if we're still live on the Facebook, but uh, we'll try and rectify that problem for you. We're on YouTube too uh, and on Twitter as well with the programme. <laughs> you can continue to give us your thoughts on uh, that. Um, so there's the take on it. It's suddenly um, all roads lead to um, the Czech Republic because it's Sparta Prague in the Europa League um, for Celtic. If they spanked them at Celtic Park, Rothby, I think Celtic are in for a torrid night tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm sure Celtic will be hoping they're not showing the form that they showed at Parkhead. Uh, again, sometimes, you know, there's uh, teams come to, to Parkhead, there, there, there's no crowd there to, to pressurise them, they feel very relaxed and that's what it looked like that night. Uh, they might be different at home, it, it doesn't mean because they're at home they're going to be as good. Uh, Celtic are showing away from home, they can, they can dig out a result and that's all they have to do. They have to dig out a performance. If they, if they can get a result, then then fair enough. But uh, it's the performance everybody's going to look at because, as we said, and we've just been talking about there, every game is so important. Uh, every negative result is going to be pressure on everybody. So if you can get a reasonable result plus a bit of performance as well, it just it just makes everybody who's you know, doing all the protesting and that look just a wee bit silly if you go on some kind of run. Yeah, here's uh, Gabriel Antoniazzi looking ahead mm. to this one. Celtic visit Stadion Letna in Prague in game week four of the Europa League as they aim for revenge over Sparta for the embarrassment in Glasgow three weeks ago. The Czech side all but ended the Hope's European campaign with a stunning and deserved 4-1 win in one of Celtic's worst ever European performances. It means that Sparta are two points above the hoops who prop up the table. Despite that result, Sparta are not in form at all. Having lost four of their last five games, they haven't won at home since the 3rd of October and have slipped to second in their domestic league. Lucas Julis bagged a hat-trick last time out, so he's the one to look out for. While Celtic can call on the fit again Christopher Julien and Hatem El Hamid, although Lee Griffiths has joined James Forrest on the injury list. With qualification hopes already minuscule, manager Neil Lennon knows his side cannot afford another slow start. The reverse game here was probably as disappointing as we've been for a while. So it's important that we motivate ourselves to correct that. And we started the game well and then lost our way a little bit, got very ragged. That, that can't happen tomorrow. We must move and endeavour to try and win the game. And to be honest with you, our way record in Europe has been pretty good. The Hoops have won just two in their last eight and the scrutiny from fans this week has increased. But Captain Scott Brown says now is the time to unite. Now is the time that we all come together. 
Uh, the fans have been fantastic for us, as I say, for the last nine seasons. And this is a time that we all stick together. We're, we're pushing for something special. We need to make sure that uh, we're all together. Everyone in that changing room is working extremely hard to try and get better on the park. Lennon will hope a much-needed victory could give Celtic the turning point that they so badly crave, whilst another defeat on Thursday could be severely damaging in more ways than one. Okay, um, we've heard all the evidence, um, some for, some against. Um, we've obviously had our statement on this one. Um, I think Celtic will lose it 2 1, Ruffy. Uh, well, I'm going to uh, look at the performance they had the last time away from home and think they can dig out some kind of result. So uh, I don't think they'll win the game. So I I'm going to go one each. Charlie. I think this, obviously, this is a game that's dead and buried, really. The group's gone for Celtic. I think they'll be. Looking at the league now, I think Sparta win this 2 0. Tom? Well, I actually watched uh, Sparta Prague at the weekend on Sparta Prague TV uh, in the house. They lost 4 2. Um, so they're not playing Is well. Is there anything they're, you they're do not watch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're particularly poor at the back, Peter. So I think Celtic, the pressure's off Celtic to an extent. As Charlie said, I think the group's gone. I think Celtic will go and get a positive result. I think they'll win 2 1. Yeah, um, quite a lot of people reacting to the fact that someone would watch Sparta Prague TV um, to see the Czech Republic, Tam McManus and David Tanner, uh, the equivalent over there. So that's quite <laughs> worrying, Ruffy. I, I, know, I know, Ruffy, that it's... There's only one reason he's watching... Yeah. Sorry, there's only one reason he's watching Prag TV. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's the, and it, I think it's, I think it's Senga, the equivalent, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, who watches Sparta Prag TV? That's absolutely brilliant, Tom. Well done to you. Um, anyway, over and above that, um, Sparta Prague against Celtic. We've got Rangers against Benfica, and suddenly, you know this, this feel good factor. I mean, I'll tell you one thing, uh, Charlie, which is. Which is great, and I, and and a few uh, we've had a few workmen out here um, at the studios um, talking to us, big Rangers fans. A lot of them are saying, you know, listen, we've had nine years of absolute pelters. It's our time to have a bit of fun with it. And the banter on social media from the people who, uh, you know, like a laugh and have a good bit of fun. It's a great time at the moment to be a Rangers fan because this is the time to lash back at some of your mates and have a, a right good laugh about it all. Yeah, I think, it, listen, Rangers are, are from day dot this season, from the start of this Europa League campaign to to where they are now have been phenomenal. You know, to, to draw two games in the league is, is some record. The goal, not conceding many goals. And the Rangers fans are enjoying it. But deep down, the manager keeps saying it, let's be humble, because they need to be. It's, it's November, there's nothing won in November. And they're in a good position. And like they said before, if Celtic win these two games at hand, it's five points. So Rangers will be looking at the table. They'll be they'll be enjoying it. They'll be, the players will be walking with a, their chest out, with a bit of a smile on their face, going into work every day, knowing that each game that they take and each game that they win, it's another one ticked off. But there's still a long way, a lot of football to go. But... No, listen, they're in a good position and they should enjoy, you know, should get, enjoy it, but don't get too carried away. Yeah, and the point that you were making, I think, is something that quite a lot of people have picked <laughs> up on, Tom. It's quite simply, when you look at it, it's a Kent, it's a Morelos, it's a Barisic, um, it's a Tavernier. It's all sellable assets, a mm. team winning despite the fact that those figures um, have been viewed as the from the auditor's perspective as an ongoing concern. Yeah, well, I said it in the show on Monday, Peter. Uh, I wouldn't be too concerned if I was a Rangers fan looking at the losses, simply because, as you mentioned, the names you rhymed off there, you can get good money for them. And, and teams and scouts, are, they'll always look at teams that are doing well. You know, Teams at the bottom of the league will never get scouted for players. You know, It's the teams at the top of the league doing well. Rangers are doing well in Europe, doing well domestically. Teams in Europe will go, by. we're going to look at their players, they're doing well. And as you said, Kent, Morelos, T Tav, uh, Barisic, all these guys are, are, are guys that you can Kamara. sell for, for good money. So, Kamara, you know, as I said, there's, the Rangers haven't had that, Charlie. They've never had that in the last three or four years, even with Kachinia. They had nobody they could sell. So it, was just, it, was a, it wasn't it was a bottomless pit. There was just leaking money left, right and centre. But now you can sell a player every, in every window and just keep yourself ticking over and keep your head above water. 
I have to say, um, ever since there was a wee sniff that maybe, you know, Ruffy was getting to his 69th birthday uh, and maybe he was contemplating stepping down, which again, there's no chance of that. He'll be here at 79. Um, but ever since there was a wee sniff of ambition from Tam Ruffy, Tam started to mispronounce every name of a manager or a player yeah. in football. <laughs> he, he I can't, can't say it can't say, I can't say him. He can't, he, I can't say him. He can't say it. <laughs> He can't say Tavernier. He can't say Cachinha. I mean, what's going on, Ruffy? I mean, this guy's yeah, trying to copy wait, you. Uh, wait you get to 69. See what problems you have. <laughs> Absolutely. But he's, still, but, he's watching, but he's watching Sparta Bragg TV. Yes, there's a few names yeah. there. You'll know about. I'm there you go. I, yeah. was watching, I was watching we'll Polish TV, TV, but there was no football in it. Yeah, absolutely. I know you were, Ruffy. Um, listen, talking about those talking about those valuable assets, it's something that Stephen Gerrard, the Rangers manager, is well aware of. And in, in, in terms of the numbers, I think obviously you'd have to take certain things into consideration in terms of the time, and they could have looked uh, very much different if we did um, accept the bid for one of our big assets. I think the important thing to know is this team's in much better shape than it was uh, when we came through the door, the, the team's littered now with big assets. The team's worth a, an awful lot of money now compared to to what it was. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah. think anybody would disagree with them on that. Tom. I think they're going. I think they're going to give Ross Wilson a lot of credit as well at Rangers uh, recruitment. I think their recruitment's been absolutely fantastic. They've recruited for positions. You know, they, they play four three three. They've, they've recruited for who can play in the left of a three, who can play centre mid. Who can play in the right of a three? They've, they've, you know, they've went for position. I listen. Yeah. Listen, I, I understand that you know the, the the Mark Allen era was was he obviously brought the manager in and and never brought you know, some of the players that come in have obviously left now. But like you, Barisic, I remember I remember having a conversation with Barisic with the manager. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, the the game against uh, Ozzie. That's where he come from, wasn't it? And I said to the manager after the game, I said, by the way, the left-back's a good player. He says, we've already got a bid in. So they'd already bought the player before they get the game at home at Ibrox. And then, you know, two days later, the deal was done. So they know, you know, they know what they want. They know what they need. And I think that's the difference now. Celtic have been good at for, for years, bringing young little gems in where they get them cheap and selling them on for big profit. And um, if you look at now, Rangers, you could... You can reel off seven, eight, maybe nine players who have, are, are big assets to the football club. Yeah, and Ruffy, let's not forget also, uh, this is an opportunity tomorrow night for Rangers to actually seal a place in the last 32 with a couple of games in hand. Yeah, and then, then they've been fantastic in Europe. Uh, great results every time they've went somewhere. And uh, Stephen Gerrard will, will want to win this one. He'll want to get it out the road. He'll want to qualify for the... The next stage uh, and start rotating some of the players because they are they have got really a lot of games coming up uh, as i said yesterday i think they've got four of the next five games are away from home uh so we want to rotate the squad and if he, he can get europe out the road that gives them a wee bit of breathing space and uh, that's what we hope they can do yeah, there certainly won't be any fear factor for Rangers in this match because on the evidence of the last time they played against Benfica, Steven Gerrard knows they're a match for them. And we've shown that, uh, certainly the big part of the game, that we could uh, match Benfica and certainly compete. Um, so this is a game that the players are very much looking forward to. We have major respect for these individually and collectively as a group, Benfica. Um. Yeah, I get a feeling um, that uh, Rangers can win this one. Um, I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for three one. Um, Tom, there, I'm optimistic about it. Three one Rangers. Uh, I think Rangers will win the game. Uh, I don't think it'll be quite as comfortable as that, Peter. I thought that Benfica for the first ten minutes over in Portugal looked as if they were going to give Rangers a doing. To be honest, they started brilliant. I think obviously sending off changed the game, and Rangers should have won. You know, Rangers gave them a bit of a chasing for the next sixty seventy minutes against ten men. So. I think it'll be a tight game. I think Rangers might just edge it and I think they'll keep a clean sheet. I'll go for 1-0 to Rangers. Ruffy? Well, by all accounts, this team uh, left nine of the first team out for the game at the weekend in one of the, the, the weaker cups. This manager's definitely want a result. He, he's the same as, as Rangers. He's wanting it done and dusted as well. I was impressed with them. You know, the, the last time, even though they went down to 10 men, they don't generally lose a lot of goals. 
So I think they'll come and, and try and get a draw at this one, and I think they'll be good enough to get it. So I'm, I'm going to go one each in this one as well. Charlie? Yeah, no, I'll go with Ruffy. I think one ones will be a fair result, and I think that could be enough. Uh, listen, um, on the show, more often than not, on a daily basis, we uh, react to news that comes out. We try and bring you news right up to date. And obviously, some people watch the programme at their leisure a little later on at night. Certainly across the globe, we have people in Australia, um, right across everywhere, United States, Canada, uh, Russia, would you believe? Uh, lots of people message us and say they enjoy the show um, when they can catch up with it. Um, and we react to stories that come out. And uh, this one has certainly caught me on the hop, but it looks as if quite a number of news agencies are picking up on it. It's certainly been reported on CNN and the Daily Mail and a number of other um, uh, news media websites are picking up on it. It looks as if at the age of 60, Diego Maradona has suffered a cardiac arrest and has died. Um, and this news has come out in the last 10 minutes, which is uh, an absolute tragedy. Um, Ruffy, you are one of those men who watched this young man burst onto the scene at Hamden Park wearing uh, the shirt of Argentina. That news is devastating. It certainly is, Peter. Uh, I think we've all been monitoring his lifestyle over the last five or six years. You know, and if we believe most of the stories, he's been off the rails a wee bit. But let's remember him for his football. You know, let's remember him on the park, you know, whatever he does away from it. It can't take away anything that we've witnessed in our, in our era. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's hope these stories don't uh, uh, don't live up to, to what we're portraying here. Uh, because sadly it'd be a miss. Uh, he, he was one of these guys who lit up a football game at any stage with the abilities that he's got. And uh, he obviously will be sadly missed. And if, 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 if he has passed away, the, the younger generation are going to get a feast of how good this guy is because obviously we're going to be remembering all the good times on the park. So stay tuned, you know, that you're going to see some fantastic uh, ability on the park. Yeah, I mean, we all know, Tom, we were all raving about the documentary, which I thought was first class, but if ever it gave you an insight into the modern day pressures of a world superstar, and I think he had it tenfold, way above what anybody had, and he had a story which was mixed in with the Mafia for good measure. Yeah, it's, it's dreadful news. It's just, I think it sums up 2020 this year has been horrific yeah, for everyone, and that is just terrible news. You know, 60 years old. Listen, I know he's, he's led a, a colourful life off the park. Um, you know, he enjoys certain things, and listen, we... we I'm I'm devastated to hear the news. You know, I I obviously didn't grow up seeing him playing. Uh, I've just watched videos uh, and watched footage of him. But one of the best players that's ever lived and, and a character. And uh, it's, it's, it really is it's dreadful news. And a lot of people are really upset with that um, because he was a hero to so many people all over the world, not just Argentinians, but people all over the world who respected him greatly as a football player. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just dreadful news. Yeah, I'm looking here at Argentine media claiming he's died of a heart attack. Uh, this is just uh, a couple of weeks after being released from hospital after treatment for a bleed on his brain. And let's not forget, and, I, and unless somebody's going to correct me here, uh, and I know we can get very nostalgic and sentimental uh, about things uh, like this, he, he's one of the greatest ever players. Um, a lot of people on UK shores... Um, certainly have the image of the hand of God. Some people, if you're a, an English person, obviously um, don't like that uh, particular incident in that game in the uh, quarterfinals of the Cup in 1986 in Mexico. Um, but let's not forget, in that game, Ruffy, for me, he scored the greatest goal I've ever seen in a World Cup yeah. match. Yeah, I think if you were to ask any of the England players who played that day uh, in a footballing sense, They'll remember him through the halfway line and they'll remember the amount of players he went by, you know, and tucked that away. So from a footballing point of view, you've got to admire somebody with that kind of ability to turn it on in such a big tournament. And uh, although the, the supporters and the media might not like him, I'm sure a lot of the English players, uh, I, I don't include obviously Terry Butcher in that one because I don't think they've, they've spoken since. But uh, I think you've got to admire the ability that uh, he had on the park. 
Yep, uh, sad news coming in there of uh, the death of Diego Maradona at the age of 60 from a heart attack. What a wonderful player uh, and what an amazing footballing legacy he leaves behind. Um, OK, uh, here's how the fixtures look for uh, the football in the Europa League involving British clubs uh, as well as Sparta Prague against Celtic. Uh, there's Braga against Leicester City, Molde take on Arsenal, it's Tottenham against Ludogorets, Rangers, Benfica and Dundalk against Rapid Vienna. Um, Tam, give us your thoughts on last night. I don't think any of us thought Hibs were going to slip up, but slip up they did. In fact, salvage a point is the only way to sum it up. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. Uh, Hibs were poor last night. I thought they lacked energy all over the park. I think that the game, obviously, maybe on Saturday against Celtic, took... A bit out of the players um, in terms of the, the input and the energy that they used in that game to get a point. Uh, I thought St Johnson were pretty impressive, to be honest. I thought they were well worthy of a point. I thought Ali McCann was excellent. McNamara, the right wing back, excellent. Uh, I thought some of the best performances on the pitch were, were from St Johnson players. I, I will say, apart from from Jamie Murphy, who is outstanding, is a great player to watch. Uh, I'm just it's just a pity that they have supporters are no one watching them live because he's a terrific player, Jamie Murphy. He's really coming into the game now. He's got his his fitness. And uh, Paul McGinn getting a couple of goals as well for right back. So, no, I think, obviously, I look at Sunday, Saturday against Celtic, I thought that was two points dropped for Hibs, the way it went. But last night was was, a, was probably a point gained because I thought Hibs were poor and they've now lost six league goals in the last three games. So, from looking really solid at the back, they're now leaking a lot of goals. And, and as I said, I was talking to James McPate last night, the Dundee manager at the game, and I'm sure he's, he's seen some things that he could maybe exploit uh, at the weekend against Hibs in the Cup. Yeah, absolutely. And on the flip side of this, Ruffy, you've got to give a special mention to Callum Davison because suddenly his players are responding. Yeah. You know, it takes a bit of time for a manager to get his message. Nine across. games unbeaten. Yeah, yeah, you've got to admire. You know, early on he was getting a lot of stick. You know, obviously just coming in and settling in. But for me, I think the sign of, of a good manager is when you're getting a bit of stick, you're still prepared to play some young players. And that's what he's done. He's threw three or four of them in there and said, look, I don't care what kind of stick you're going to give me. I think these guys are, are for the future. And it's good to see a manager getting a wee turn, you know, with the players coming up uh, with the goods. And, that, and that's what's happened. You know, you just have a bit of faith in them to come good. Sure, they'll have some, some bad mistakes here and there. But at the end of the day, the more games they get, as we're prov proven now, that uh, they're going to start and relax and get the results that they, sh they deserve. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, I have to apologise to uh, some people who lost the ability to comment on the feed on Facebook. Sometimes when we show an international um, or European uh, interview from the managers across in Europe, Facebook can test it and don't realise that we are indeed... Um, a, a news agency as well um, and don't forget also uh, we've got a competition running at the moment see if you can guess what Ruffy's wife is whispering in his ear uh, yeah. uh, while he's lying <laughs> yeah, on air <laughs> uh, it's a, it's she a just, uh, she it's just she just told, is his birthday present getting no, no. ready no no she's uh, just told me that uh, just told me that uh, Maradona's died yeah that's fantastic so um, could you ask her it. Ruffy if she knows the the Beatles have split up as well. I just want to clarify that she's <laughs> completely and utterly on the ball. Um, there you are. Right. And that is why, that is why we took the photograph, Charlie, on that day when Maggie thought it was a great idea mid-show to inform us that his dog had died. I mean, honestly, yeah, well, she is just, the, she's just the woman who comes in with bad news. She's <laughs> giving another whistle. Bad news now. I don't know why. Is dead. I don't know why she's still running about in a negligee. That was this morning. I hope she's getting yeah, half I'm your so appearance here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She is indeed. Thank you to the countless people who are um, at this moment posting RIP Diego Maradona. <coughs> Excuse me. It's really sad news. And I think the whole world uh, now is responding to this news. And I think, you know, over the course of the day, uh, some of the tributes that will be coming in will be from all across uh, the whole of uh, the football world because he truly was a fantastic player. You can have your own opinion on whether you think he was the greatest or not. We're certainly <coughs> excuse me, not going to contest anybody's opinion on their memories of Diego Maradona. Uh, full March to St. Johnson, they get a point. Maybe they should have got more. What do you make of Hamilton Aberdeen tonight, Ruffy? 
Oh, as I said to you before, I'm a bit wary of midweek games with Hamilton. Hamilton, <laughs> Hamilton have actually went up to Aberdeen midweek and won games, you know, and, and a couple of occasions. Uh, and I, I was reading there, I think Aberdeen are minus five or six players. This is this is me building up to, you know, saying <laughs> Aberdeen are going to win this one. <laughs> 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 no, no, they are they are missing a few players, but I think Hamilton. Just nothing going right for them just now. Obviously, the weekend, getting that late blow as well. So I'm going to go Aberdeen to win 2-1. Mm, Tom? Uh, you better get a drink of water, Peter, by the way. <laughs> choking, choking, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> uh, I, I, think that, uh, I think Aberdeen will win the game. I think that uh, they're too strong. I think Hamilton are just they're, they're in a downward spiral now. They can't keep any clean sheets. Aberdeen have obviously got a few players missing, but they, I think they'll bounce back from from the game at the weekend, and I think they'll uh, I think they'll win two 0 Charlie, I'm going to throw a spanner on the work here, and I think Hamilton can get something at this, and I'm going to go one one. Wow, you've caught me on the hop there. I might choke again now. Charlie said one one. <laughs> um, yep, <laughs> I think uh, I'm going to go Aberdeen to win this one by uh, two goals to nil. Um, nevertheless, all about opinions. Listen. When England gets something um, that uh, looks as if it's opening the door to fans coming back, suddenly Scotland reacts. And Neil Doncaster certainly has done that on the basis of English football fans being allowed in, albeit in some small numbers. This is what the SPFL chief executive um, obviously wanted to call for an urgent meeting uh, with Nicola Sturgeon. He highlighted a number of points. Scottish clubs have been hit harder than England because of our heavy reliance on gate receipts. Every major club in Scotland has a detailed plan in place for returning fans back into stadium uh, in a carefully managed environment. Uh, I'm calling on Nicola Sturgeon to do the right thing by Scotland's football fans. If it's good enough for English fans, it's good enough for Scottish fans. If the First Minister refuses to allow fans to watch their teams in carefully regulated numbers, she will have to explain the clinical differences between Scottish and English fans. Would you support a resolution giving the SPF or board the power to curtail the season in the event it cannot be completed by May 31st? Failure to get fans back in the very near future will sound the death knell for some of our best loved clubs. Uh, the clubs have done the hard work of putting plans in place. All we need now is for the First Minister to say yes. Now you can understand why Neil Doncaster has indeed um, been so vociferous uh, in his uh, letter there to... Uh, Nicola Sturgeon. This is what the First Minister replied um, on that uh, letter. However much Neil Doncaster, for reasons I understand, is only looking at football, we can't see any sector or any part of society in isolation because there is only so much we can do overall to keep the virus under control. What's your reaction to that, Ruffy? Because quite simply, um, you know, this is Neil Doncaster's, you know, sounding the alarm bell, the death knell of some best love clubs. If she can't do anything, she might have to bail out what is the national sport. Well, first of all, I would prefer if he was pursued some financial reward uh, from the government rather than fans into the ground. You know, I think financial uh, handout would be much better than the, 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 the crowds coming in at this precise moment in time. Because as we know, well, they have done nothing. The SPFL, the SPFL yeah, and the SFA I, have asked think, for some I, form I of reimbursement. I don't think I don't think they've done enough, Peter. I don't think they've, they've been going on about this for the last two months or two. They seem to be moving down in England to get uh, some money. And there are some sports in Scotland that are going to get a handout. There's five or six sports in Scotland going to get a handout, but not football. So I'm just saying, yeah, I would, I would love fans to come in. But I think you have to remember, down in England, it's only, it's only crowds getting in in certain areas, depending what band you're in. You know, you're not going to get... Any supporters in if you're if if you're band one two three or four or whatever it is, and it's going to be the same up here. I mean, we've got a lockdown to the twelfth of December. What what you want fans to come in within that time scale? It's not going to happen. It's not even going to happen over Christmas and New Year. We can't even go to each other's houses. So what chance have you got? No letting support. Are we not going to yours on Christmas Day, Ruffy? What? Oh, you have no chance of coming to mine at Christmas Day. <clears throat> <laughs> I, <laughs> it's, uh, it, 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 it's a, it's hard, it's a hard body. 
I mean, it's pretty household, yeah, isn't it? We, we all want it. Yeah. But I think if you were, I think if you were to get around to the clubs, I, I think most of them would say, "Hey, get us the money first, and then let the crowds go in." Because I think the crowds are further away than what it is to get a financial rebate or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, well, listen, Ruffy, you talk a lot of sense on the basis that I think a lot of clubs want some kind of uh, bailout help. Um, that they can get from uh, the government here in Scotland. And it's certainly, I think, heavily linked to uh, a kitty that will be put together from the main UK government. And whether that is suddenly filtered down to be distributed in certain sports, only time will tell. It is um, sport and politics inextricably linked at this point. Some people think it doesn't uh, mix, but believe me, it does. And it has been shown to mix all the way through history. Um, so if you are still watching the programme on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, you'll realise that uh, the world is reacting to the sad news that Diego Maradona has sadly passed away um, at the age of 60 and uh, he's died of a heart attack and it's sad news and that image of him holding uh, the World Cup I think will live long in the memory of many people who actually uh, watched him play at his absolute best. And, and if anybody remembers in Ruffy uh, and possibly Charlie, and maybe Tam as a youngster, but certainly he was that good that people used to get up to watch the Channel 4 programme, um, Gazeta della Sport, um, mm -hmm. um, and Golazzo, whatever it was, it was brilliant. We would get up, we would watch it because one man seemed to transform a club that was going nowhere uh, and he won them the Serie A on two occasions, won them the UEFA Cup, and he was just he was just magical at club level, Ruffy. Oh, I think if anybody gets a chance to watch that documentary, the man was an absolute legend. You know, he, he lifted everybody for that region. You know, if you see it, you know, he had his, his, he had his portrait on the side of walls. It was everywhere you went. It was people just lived for the football, uh, and that's what they all geared <laughs> up to. The, the whole industry revolved around Diego Maradona, and they all... And if you got anybody for that region, they would tell you, you know, how much he did. And I think it was actually a game where he was playing. Uh, I think it was Argentina versus Italy or something like that in, in Napoli. And uh, the, the Italian supporters didn't know who to support, you know, because he was so well liked. Uh, and he was just a fantastic footballer. Uh, and, and the ability, I mean, I was lucky enough to see him at Hamden when he was 17. And uh, there's a clip in that game where I think he went by about five or six players without even batting an island. <coughs> and that was at 17. So everything they've done in the game, is, it's just colossal, you know. And everybody talks about Messi. And that, that's the only thing that I have Maradona above Messi, that he hasn't grabbed a World Cup occasion to show everybody how really good he is. Maradona's done that. Yeah, that's uh, a good point, Ruffy. Paul, and by the way, he never did anything in half measures. I know we've mentioned him before in the programme, but it's well worthy of just flitting in and out of it because the thousands upon thousands of people are reacting on social media to his passing. Um, and Paul Clementi says, uh, the fight at Barcelona versus Athletic Bilbao. Um, <laughs> got, I, remember I, mean, that. I mean, honestly. He, he need the boy I mean, in the face. I think he kicked a boy in the chest as well. I mean, he was unbelievable. I mean, it was it was one of the best fights you could ever see on a pitch. And there's your one of the world's greatest players, Charlie, just absolutely scything somebody down and putting the studs into the boy's chest. I mean, he was at times volatile as well. When he, but by the way, Charlie, this was an era where you could kick lumps out of people. Oh yeah, I watched a little thing, not the same level, but I watched Vinnie Jones, some of Vinnie Jones' tackles all day and they were horrendous. But back in the day you got away with it and it's a sad sad day for, for football on a whole that a legend, a genius, the greatest player probably ever to, you know, obviously you've seen him play live and things like that, the greatest player ever to, to grace a football pitch has sadly passed away and um, obviously It'll bring out some of these videos and uh, these documentaries that he's done in before, but when when they go, when he sadly pass away, it is a shame. And you know these people should be remembered for what they've done on the pitch uh, because he was phenomenal. And like Ruffy said, looking back and, and giving my opinion, that probably puts him 
above of just what Messi has achieved in his whole career, just winning World Cups on his own, winning leagues on his own, you know, and um, yeah, it's it's a sad day for, for football. Um, yeah. Any team, any country that supports anybody else will be will be gutted to see one of the great, like they say, the greatest player ever to, to sadly go. Yeah, 25th of November is not a great day for, um, you know, for footballers. Ruffy, it's 15 years ago today that George Best sadly passed away. I, I didn't know that. I uh, didn't know that at all. You know what? What two two legends? You know together, Maradona and George Best. Absolutely uh, amazing that bit of news. Yeah, and and, and amazingly, um, again, uh, we are just lucky, Ruffy, that we're in the the presence of greatness. It's your sixty ninth birthday. Um, you obviously um, had some time with George Best, uh, and you played in that game at Hamden where Maradona uh, was on the pitch playing. I mean, it's incredible the links to you. I mean, if anybody underestimates the, the how much of a legend you are, Ruffy, they're getting it right here and now. Uh, when you look back at your career, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and, and talking about careers, um, Charlie, what's happening? What about Paul McGowan? He slaughtered everybody. Was he right to do so? Absolutely, I think he was right. A few harsh words to be said at the weekend, a um, few harsh words said on Monday morning as well. And um, like like you're saying, you know, at times the manager takes a flat, but at times you need to have a dressing room that's going to be fighting for each other. And the home truths sometimes have to be told, and, and we've, we've said that mon Sunday, uh, Monday and Saturday after the game. And we move on, we've got a tough game at Hibs on Saturday, but it's a game that we should enjoy because it's another challenge. I thought at times... And, and Tam was there in the game. We caused Hibs problems and, and we lost three goals in a space of six, seven minutes that killed the game. But there's opportunities there on Saturday if we, could, we, can, we can go there and, and, and give it all and we'll see what happens. But definitely home truths um, need to be said. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's gone now. It's, you know, we, we go back into work tomorrow and we'll, and we'll pre prepare for Hibs. Can you turn it around? What um, you know, when a player makes a statement like that, you have to ask yourself: Well, are some people not pulling their weight? Well, it's no lads not pulling their weight. We're just not as a team or as a group of players. We're we're conceding too many easy goals. We're are we getting tight enough to people? Are we, you know, being aggressive enough trying to win the ball back? Are we allowing, you know, good? Okay, players to, to go by is too easy and, and, and things like that. And and, and are, we, are we defending as a unit, you know, at the right times in the pitch? So we've looked at it, we know what we've got to do, um, and we have to stop talking about it. And we actually just have to take it onto the pitch and show that, you know, what what uh, what reason the manager brought us to that football club. Because it's a good football club, a big football club in, um, in Scotland with a good history of. You know, got good players over the years and, and done okay. So we have to try and get back to that level of, of trying to win football matches. And, and we'll get a reaction on Saturday um, and, and, and hoping that we can cause Hibs a few problems. Here, here, can I, can I ask Charlie, we've, 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 we've spoken about it with Rangers and Celtic, missing the fans, you know, and Charlie's actually playing. You know, I'd let you ask Charlie, you know, does it make a difference uh, when there's no fans there on the park? Do you think it'd benefit but, you if your your home fans it, were there? I think I think it would probably help us, but the way we're playing at the moment, yeah, yeah. you know, it's a think or swim situation for some players. Can you handle that pressure? The fans been on you. And we talked about that Monday morning. You know, if we had four or five thousand there shouting Saturday with the results that are not going to guess, can can we handle that as a group of players? Well, we don't know because they're not there. But um, it'd been a lot harder. So at the moment. You know, we're sort of not getting away with it, but the pressure is not as intense because the fans are not there. But when they do return, they'll voice their opinion. We understand that. But we have to be in better form by the time they come back. And if we want to achieve something, we need to we need to pick up soon. Um, and if we don't, then, then there'll be big questions to be asked. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, uh, the buck stops with the manager, whether it's Celtic, whether it's Dundee, you name it, any club across uh, the world, um, they're all aware of the pitfalls. Uh, this question is not for Charlie, it's certainly something that Tam and I can discuss. Ruffy's had his uh, point of view on it. Um, I, I, I will be blunt about it, Tam. I think James McPake's got a big job in his hands because I think the back line, uh, from goalkeeper to the back four or five, um, 
that's where I see Dundee's problems at the moment. I know everybody collectively will look as a team and maybe have to do more, but some of their defending in the games I've watched has been suspect. Yeah, I, I think all, all good teams are built from a solid defence, solid goalkeeper, solid back four, back five. Uh, but Char as Charlie said, it comes for the front. You defend for the front. So you can't just have a go at the defenders or a left back or a centre half or a goalkeeper. It comes for everybody. You know, if you're not pulling your weight up front, you're not shutting people down, you're letting full backs push on and you're not doing your job properly uh, when you've not got the ball, then it doesn't matter. But I, I spoke to James McPate last night um, about it and he said that he hopes that the. He had no problem with, with, with young uh, Paul McGowan coming out and saying that. He had no problem with it because he feels as if something had to change, something had to be said, and it can't always come from the manager. You know, you can't. The manager can keep battering onto players and black, and players eventually just switch off. But if it's coming from within the dressing room and everybody's getting their points over, I've been in dressing rooms before when I've been in a team that's struggling, and the manager shuts the door and leaves you to it. I'm sure Charlie's been the same. You know, when you go in, you discuss it yourselves. You don't need the manager there, and you start pointing fingers, and you and you get it out. You get it out in the open. And sometimes that can help when you get everything off your chest and everybody knows where they stand. So um, I hope they don't get a reaction on Saturday against Hibs. But I think that the whole, I think, <laughs> listen, uh, uh, it's, it's one of the things that it, sometimes it needs to be done, Peter. And uh, I'm sure that Dundee <laughs> will get a reaction from that going forward because everybody's got everything they've got off their chest. There's no bitching. And James said to me everything that, that Paul McGowan said after the game. He said at half time and, and after the game to the players. It wasn't he, he didn't go to the press and say, he'd already said it to the boys. So I think that was that's important to know that as well. Yeah, absolutely. OK, we'll find out at the weekend how they respond to um, that tongue lashing as far as uh, last night's concerned. Here's a quick look at the results from last night. We've had to cram a few things in because reacting to the sad news about Diego Maradona. But the Champions League um, uh, for tonight, Olympiacos against Man City, München Gladbach um, against Shakhtar Donetsk, Marseille against Porto, Liverpool, Atalanta, that is the match I'll be glued to. Inter Milan against Real Madrid's a cracker as well. Bayern Munich, Salzburg, Atletico Madrid, Lokomotiv Moscow, and Ajax against Michelin. Um, so you can choose from that what you want. Here's how it went last night. Um, my God, I need to be quick with this producer today. Chelsea won 2 1. Krasnodar <laughs> lost 2 1. Man United won 4 1 against uh, Istanbul. And it was 4 0 to Barcelona against Dynamo Kiev. PSG got the solitary goal against RB Leipzig. Lazio 3 1. And there was Borussia Dortmund 3 0. And Juventus 2 1. Borussia Dortmund's 3 0 against Club Bruges is interesting because as we witness and take in the sad news of Diego Maradona, um, when one legend leaves the stage, suddenly uh, there is um, possibly a new successor to the throne. Um, it could have been a Messi, it could be Ronaldo. Everybody's got their own opinion. There's a young man at the moment ripping it up in a Borussia Dortmund top. Um, it's Erling Haaland. Could he be the next big superstar? There's his uh, stats at the moment. First teenager to score 10 Champions League goals in one season. 44 goals in 40 games for Salzburg and Dortmund last season. And he's already scored more Champions League goals than Ronaldo and Adriano. So, um, his stats are impressive. Um, could he be the next superstar in your mind, Charlie Adam? Yeah, he's he's got other potential, hasn't he? He's um, big, strong, powerful, quick... His 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 goal scoring record so far has has been phenomenal, and um, you know he's at a good club that's you know that's that's gave him an opportunity. So the next couple of years will be be big for him and and seeing where where and what he can achieve in his career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Um, enjoy your football. All I would say, um, we started the show. Um, dealing with uh, so many topics across football right across the globe as we do often don't forget to like share and follow and of course subscribe to our youtube channel sorry for the people who are looking to pass comment uh, on our facebook we had um, a slight contention with uefa which froze our comment section but by the time it got up and running uh, the groundswell of emotion and tributes to diego maradona uh, were coming through in their thousands so Thank you very much to everyone passing on their um, condolences, I think, to the Maradona family and the football family who will miss, uh, of course, Diego Maradona. We certainly will not uh, lose the images of his genius with that left foot um, for Boca Juniors, for Barcelona, for Napoli and, of course, for Argentina. Um, we will um, 
severely miss that man uh, and his genius and our condolences to the family. Um, today, 25th of November, um, we lost George Best, we lost Diego Maradona, but I have to say, I speak for Tam and Charlie and myself on this, um, the big man's been with me nine years, this is his 69th birthday, it's incredible, uh, the legend uh, that is Ruffy is still with us, um, the kindest, most laid-back guy you'd ever meet in your life. <laughs> Ruffy, what are you going to do for your birthday tonight? Well, any other any other year, I'd probably get to a nice restaurant and have a, a good night out, but that's not the case. So it's in house tonight. Uh, probably a carry out. Uh, I'm just wondering if Tam's got Greek TV. Uh, maybe come over and watch Olympiakos later on. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> no, it'll be a quiet night. Uh, but uh, I'll certainly enjoy it. And don't forget, if you're really lucky, you can tune in later on when Ruffy will just be on uh, PLZ Soccer on his own with Maggie just whispering in his ear, as she has done throughout this entire show today, just to keep him informed of everything that's happening. Um, good luck to Charlie at the weekend from Ruffy, Tam McManus, Peter Martin. Happy birthday, Ruffy. Thank you for watching. Happy birthday, Cheers, Ruffy. Cheers. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit Arnold Clark.